Hello and welcome to the Homeless Consultant channel. My name is Paul B. I am the Homeless Consultant. Today I am in the final day of my stay at this hotel where I took three days off for Labor Day. If you look at my previous video, Happy Labor Day, you'll see why I took three days off. This is actually quite overdue. What I want to do today is just um, go through this list as quick as possible and it will have to be quick because my battery's going to die. I want to tell you about this third hotel I've been in. You're going to have to watch the previous videos to see what I mean by that, but I've been in three hotels. The first one was shut down by the Minnesota Department of Health. It was the best one, by far the least expensive. Then I went to a second one that was moderate in every way. It wasn't as good. Uh, in most regards and it was more expensive and then when I had to leave that one I went to because the manager pulled a stunt on me I, I'm not gonna tolerate I came to this third one this one is just absolutely intolerable I hate being in this hotel and it's the most expensive of all so what I want to do is go over why this one is a problem. Remember at the first hotel I paid what amounts to fifty dollars a night and that includes tax so it was really about forty dollars a night. This place I'm at here it's like sixty nine dollars a night and then of course you have to pay another ten dollars in taxes to the great state of Minnesota who has done so much for me with those taxes. I live in this car for the last fifth year now. So the first thing with this hotel you'll notice is that they leave the security entrances at the ends open all day long. Of course a couple consequences of that are that there's no security <laughs> at all, nothing. And second of all it allows all the flies and gnats and creepy crawlies that you want to come in because they have basically 8, 12, 16 hours to do it and they definitely make their way into your room. I have never had to swat so many flies and I have an internal room there. The only time I've had to swat flies in a room was when I was in the first hotel and it wasn't many because it was up to me how many flies came in. It was when I opened the door because it faced the outside. This one they leave the security doors open all day so it just lets flies and bugs in. The door the door in this place, there is no way to close it without slamming it. I'll demonstrate here. So the door, there's nothing you can really do, no matter how gently you hold it, there's nothing you can do to avoid slamming the door and disturbing the people around you, or having them disturb you. Also, when you just let the door go, when you just release it, like if you walk in and your hands are full, instead of coming to a nice smooth stop and closing and locking and latching, this is what happens. Again, there's no way for you to show respect for your neighbors in there because you can't stop it from slamming, and based on the people who are at this hotel, they're not even going to try to do it for me. All right, next up is the door itself. There is, on most of the doors, this particular door, this stay, does have the chain on it. Most of them do not have any chain at all, just the deadbolt, which really means nothing with those key card systems. Um, and I'll have to mention, you know, when I first started staying here, I locked my key out about three times in a row right away. Okay, they didn't know me back then. I was, I was new here. And when I went up to the desk to get another key, all I had to do was tell them the room number. I did not have to tell them my name. I did not have to show them any ID, and they would just cut me another key. How safe do you think my stuff is in there? The peephole. The peephole, actually on this room, is okay, but on every other room I've been in in this place, they were filthy, and they were just so clogged up you couldn't see anything. One of them was just nothing. You look in and you just see a bunch of yellow and brown. You couldn't see, you couldn't even tell if someone was moving. So the peepholes are basically useless in many of the rooms. Then when you go inside, all of the light switches have different covers. 
different colors. Some are white, some are beige, some are kind of that cream. They're different, different colors, different styles, and they're filthy, absolutely filthy. Of course, that doesn't really matter because um, only one light works in this room. So you can't really see. I had to use my flashlight, my head, my headlamp flashlight, to actually see how filthy these light switches were. Um, so the only light in there that works is the one in the in the room, and then the bathroom light works also. All right, the bathroom itself. Uh, again, as I said in the last video, in this particular room anyway, it smells literally like a decomposing skunk. I'm not trying to be funny there. That is the best description I can give you of the odor. It's horrifying. It just makes me want to vomit. The bathroom, uh, the bathtub drain in there is just putrid and it's open. It doesn't have a doesn't have a plug on it, and the bathroom fan is quite loud. Again, uh, that causes it can cause problems. May or may not, but it certainly you know it's going to disturb neighbors if nothing else. The thermostat on the wall. Take a look at this. You tell me, did somebody set an M80 firecracker off inside that thing or not? How did it get in that? How could it get in that condition? And how could it be kept in that condition by a responsible professional hotelier? How could that happen? Let's go look at the air conditioner itself. The air conditioners in this place, every one of them seems to be different. Some of them are on the ground, some of them are way up high. The controls work differently. The controls are pretty much rubbed off of most of them, so you can't even tell how to control it. This particular one, uh, you can see some wear on it. They're, it's absolutely filthy. Just absolutely filthy controls. I mean, don't forget, every one of these filthy things that I touch, putting my eye up to those peepholes, you know, you get an eye infection, touching those light switches, touching these controls on this thing, trying to touch that thermostat. Every time you touch that stuff, you don't know what's been in that room before you. These things should be clean. If we move over to the microwave oven, it took me a while to figure this out. I thought it just didn't work at all, but what it is, is the zero doesn't work. So every time I would go to put in, you know, 200 for two minutes or 300, it wouldn't take it, and I couldn't figure out why. Of course, I had to reset the clock first before you can do anything because apparently they keep plugging, unplugging it and plug it in, but then they don't reset the clock. So the zero doesn't work, but even beyond that, when I do put it in, I put in some water to make some ramen noodles for three minutes, and the water came out warm. It wasn't even hot yet. Normally, it takes about a minute and a half to get hot. All right, if you look at the TV, which is the first thing I unplug when I go into any hotel, I want nothing to do with a television. If I could, I would throw the thing out of the room. The idiot box, one of the things that's most responsible for the dumbing down of the last couple generations, I don't want that thing near me. I just unplug it immediately. And as you can see, the two cords hanging down on this one, they, they should have merged them in the center with a snake that protects the cord and protects people from the cord and routed it, but they didn't, did they? They just hung a couple cords. Likewise, if you look on the floors of these rooms, this one isn't as bad. This is the only mass of wires that are on the floor in this particular room. Most of these rooms have wires all over the place, cables, cords all over the place. Um, similarly, the plugs in this place are just unbelievable. I mean, they, they most of them have burn marks. They're all different. Some of them don't have the face plates. It's just the, you know, if you take the face plate off of a plug and you can see the, the high voltage wires in the back behind there, that's, that's a great place to take your kids. But they're, they're all different. The, the, wires, the wires for the lamps are such a, a thin gauge, I can't believe they can even function. I mean, uh, it just terrifies me. There's burn marks on them. The octopus all the high voltage appliances in here, the refrigerator, microwave, coffee maker, TV, into one power strip, and it's not even a power conditioner, it's just a surge protector, which means nothing. Let's have a, let's have a nice warm fire, shall we? Um, likewise, the power has gone off twice. Now, I, put in, I think I put in my last video that the power went off in this stay, and then I had to go up front and have them go flip the breaker. 
a couple weeks ago I was here, the power went out and it went out for four hours. Four hours. And that's one of those times I was staying for a day and a half. Four of the hours of that, I had to sit in a dark room. It was extremely hot. It was just getting boiling hot swatting flies. The only things I had in that room that worked were the fan from my car which runs on batteries and the flashlight that goes on my head which I use in the car. In other words, I was paying 80 bucks a, what was it, 70, 80 bucks a day after taxes to stay in this room which were the exact same conditions as my car. And these hoteliers had nothing to say. They were very rude about it. They just pushed me away, wouldn't talk about it, didn't even think of offering me any kind of compensation for it. Four hours, no power. And I'm paying, I'm, I live in a car, I'm homeless, I pay $80 and four hours are spent in the dark, in the heat, with no access to any of the stuff I brought in because nothing will work. Since the power went off in here and the guy told me, well, you can't run the coffee maker and other appliances in this plug, so I took it and I put it on the floor and I plugged it into my power conditioner for my computer that I brought, and that seems to have worked. So I left the coffee maker on the floor. There's a classy place. When, oh, by the way, when it comes to coffee, uh, when you run out of the coffee packets, if you go to the front desk and ask for them, about half the people up there get a little snotty with you. One of them even kind of under his breath said something like, you know, you know, you only get one of these every stay or something like that. Something just incredibly real. Those things cost about 22 cents. I used to run hotels. Just disgusting. Um, as you can see in the bathroom, uh, I, have to, I have to bring my own air fresheners for this place. So among when I go out and I get my food before I come to this place, I also get a couple air fresheners or candles. I have to. I mean, because the rest of the room doesn't smell any better than that bathroom. Um, the windows in most of these rooms, the locks don't work, and that is especially true on the ground floor where they have little cubby holes the building is built with outcroppings so if you're in one of these rooms you're basically not going to be seen by anybody there might be some hiker going off on their own every once in a while who might be at some distance where they could have some visibility of that window otherwise it's just the people who want to break into your room because the windows don't have any locks and they can just slide them out that's why I can't leave this place. I can't leave my stuff in this place. And that's another reason I'm talking so fast so I can get back in there before everything's stolen. Um, the room I'm in right now, the lock does actually work, although it's a lame one, but it does work. But in the other rooms, the lock didn't work in the windows. The carpet. Carpet is filthy and has ink stains. Take a look. You can't really see it because of the sunlight. My feet are absolutely black. They're disgusting. They're grotesque. And I haven't been able to find a good way to wash them off easily. I actually have to get in the bathtub with a brush and get them all brushed up to get my feet clean. There's no way to just take soap and go over them. That's how filthy they get on these carpets. Now how about the facilities of this place? Okay, well among the facilities that they list as their amenities are vending machines. Well, the vending machine here costs twice as much as the previous hotel. I got a candy bar for 75 cents over there. The guy went out and bought the candy himself and stocked it himself. He was making money. These people charge a dollar fifty for the same candy bar. I don't I don't I don't want to spend a dollar fifty for a candy bar. I didn't mind if I absolutely had to, if I really got hungry or a sweet tooth, I would go spend 75 cents at the other place. A dollar fifty, really? And the, the previous hotel also had a very, very nice swimming pool. One of the nicest swimming pools I've ever seen in any hotel that wasn't like a five-star hotel. Very, very nice pool. This place doesn't have a swimming pool. And they charge $30 more. <laughs> and they charge twice as much for their vending machine. Their idea of breakfast, their continental breakfast, is the same thing you have in your room, essentially. Coffee and juice. They have a little room up front with two family-sized tables and then enough room for people to walk around to the machines behind them. But the only thing in the machines is coffee, which you already have in your room, and then juice, and the juice is watered down. Can you believe this? These guys are so cheap, they water the juice down. That's their continental breakfast. At the, at the last place, we had uh, at least donuts. Not much, but something. 
at least it showed that they were trying. And frankly, it was kind of nice to come down and get coffee and a donut instead of leaving your coffee machine on the floor, walking outside on that filthy floor down to the breakfast area and getting coffee. The same thing you just had on your floor in your room. You see, you see what I'm saying. I'm losing my voice. I'm just so disgusted with this place. They have a laundry here. Well, sort of. The laundry has one washer, one dryer. In all the times I have been here, which is now several weeks, I have not seen one moment where that washer is not running, ever, day or night. I'm often put in the room right next to it, and then people day and night, boom, just slamming the laundry door. Boom! So I've never been able to do my laundry here just because you can't get access to it. As far as I can tell, the owners of the hotel are using that laundry themselves. Literally, that laundry is running 24 hours a day. Somebody's in there all the time. At the other place, there were, I think, uh, one, two, three, three. There might have even been four, but I think there were three sets of laundry. And I, I never once had a problem accessing the laundry ever at that place. And that cost $30 less at that place. So, and again, this place doesn't even have a swimming pool in terms of facilities. The thing that really makes this hotel utterly intolerable, all the things I just described are the kinds of things that, say, someone else might have described about the first hotel I stayed in, the one that the Minnesota Department of Health shut down, which I had no problem with. Frankly, I think this one's worse than that, than the one they shut down, but even if you try to say that they're basically equal, this is what makes this place more intolerable than the other one. The people. The people who stay in this place are trashy beyond belief. They're just horrifying. They scare the living daylights out of me. I don't trust them. I don't like being near them. It's grotesque. I do not feel safe. I do not feel like my, my possessions are safe. Probably even more important than that is the staff here, the, which is run, it's run by the people who own it. And again, all three of these hotels are owned by Indian families. Indian families are taking over all the hospitality businesses in America, even though their culture is the least hospitable culture I've ever seen. Certainly in terms of Western civilization's idea of hospitality, they have nothing to do with it. They don't smile, they don't say hello, they don't make you feel welcome. In fact, they make you feel like you're a burden every time you come near them. They, they make you feel like you are burdening them as you come up to give them your $80 to stay for one night in a place like this. When the power goes out for four hours and you go over and politely ask when the power is going to come on, they, they basically chew you out. It'll come back on, it'll be back. My apologies, the camera overheated again. Those are the conditions I live in in this car. The camera can overheat, but if a human does it, people like the Minnesota Department of Health couldn't care less. Moving onward, as I said, the front desk here, the people who own the place are just the most inhospitable people imaginable. The housekeeping staff, none of them speak English for one thing. They don't look at you, they don't smile, they don't really say hello. A couple times they have, a couple times. There's one who looks like she's gonna kill everybody in that place. One of the meanest looking just storms through with this frown, just pushes, Pat, literally just pushes you out of the way. This is one of the housekeepers, nasty. The one time when I was leaving, remember, it takes about six trips for me to load my car and unload my car. When I was leaving, it was a couple weeks ago, it was, it was the same week that the uh, power went out for four hours. When I, I was making those six trips, every time I left, there were three housekeepers standing in the foyer, and they would just turn and stare right at me. Not smiling, not saying hello, just stare at me. And then there was a fourth one sitting by the washing machine, just staring at her phone the whole time. It took me about 20 minutes to load my car. The whole time, they're standing in that foyer, and every time I would leave that room, all six times, they just turn and stare at me. Why? Because they wanted to use the room. They, they want to get in and clean the room. They're waiting for me to leave. That's how welcome I feel in that place. All right. When I ran hotels, I would do things like set up schedules for maintenance. For example, I would say, okay, here's your project. Here's your project for today. I want you to go to all the unoccupied rooms and check the peepholes. 
okay if you can clean them out and make them good and serviceable fine if you have to replace them fine replace them all right and then I would maintain my own schedule so that I know which rooms got done because some of the rooms were occupied and you couldn't work on them those would be set aside for another day and then I would rotate it to another project how about cleaning the windows outside uh, look at the windows in this place just absolutely filthy so I would set up schedules like that for our maintenance person so that you know make sure the plugs are in a nice snake so that they're taken care of okay that's what I did when I ran hotels that ain't what's happening here the last thing I'd like to say is something about the law of supply and demand which is something that Minnesota government period doesn't know anything about the most basic fundamental economic law in existence the law of supply and demand these legislators don't comprehend it they violate it all the time which is why every time they do something things get worse every time Minnesota Department of Health shut down the least expensive hotel in the area the reason it was the least expensive is because in according to most people it was the least nice hotel it's the law of supply and demand there's less demand for a hotel that is in worse condition than others that's why it was cheaper that's why I could afford it when they shut it down guess what there were only three hotels in the area that were affordable for people like me and this is hardly affordable I have nothing left because I'm paying an extra sixty bucks every week my apologies the camera overheated again let me try to finish this as quickly as possible before it overheats yet again what I was saying was that when the Minnesota Department of Health shut down that least expensive hotel there were two consequences that had to happen they had to happen according to the law of supply and demand something the Minnesota Department of Health knows nothing about a the other two hotels that remain that were competing directly with that hotel could now raise their prices they could raise their prices without improving any of their offerings they could just raise it because now all the people who were staying at that first hotel had to find somewhere else to stay and that's exactly what happened why do you think I'm paying thirty dollars more a week and now sixty dollars more a week than the other one that's the reason that's part of the reason the second thing that happens is that these two remaining hotels now have less incentive than they did before to compete because they are closer each of them is closer to having a monopoly on the market so they have less incentive to I don't know provide security provide clean accommodations to uh, be nice be friendly to provide a continental breakfast in the real world they have less incentive to do anything for you because where else are you gonna go one of the three hotels that were competing in this market was shut down by the Minnesota Department of Health see that's the thing these people in Minnesota government do not comprehend the law of supply and demand and they don't understand the law of unintended unintended consequences they don't have any foresight they don't think forward the Minnesota Department of Health if they had any intelligence at all they would have understood that when they shut down that hotel it's gonna have an big impact on the local economy and the camera overheated again let me try to finish this one up for you as quick as possible the Minnesota Department of Health they just only thing that matters to them is that they exert their power and control and domination over other people to the extent that they're able they get pleasure out of it like I said they were smiling chuckling they were having a great time as they terrorize this hotel and the people in it but it has consequences for other people and guess what when you think really hard about what I just said about how it impacts other people it impacts the whole local economy it impacts this market it impacts the law of supply and demand when you think long and hard about that I put an, out another video that describes exactly what I'm talking about when someone comes out of the clear blue sky enters your life you never ask them to they enter your life and they destroy it it's called the sum of all degeneracy the sum of all degeneracy is all these people who keep entering my life when I'm just sitting here minding my own business. Before this thing overheats, I've just got to go. I'm sorry to sound so aggressive and everything. It's not that I'm that upset. It's that I want to say it before this camera shuts off again. It keeps overheating in this car that I live in. Just like I overheat in this car that I live in. But nobody cares about that. Appreciate you watching. 
See you next time. The window's dirty. The bathroom stinks. This ain't no place to be a man. Ain't got no future. Ain't got no past. And I don't think I even can. The floor is filthy. The walls are thin. The staff is frowning in my face. The flies are winning. I'm losing ground. Can't seem to join the human race. Living in a hell.